chemical elements that are similar to calcium go to all the bone marrow from the head to your toe and irradiate every aspect of the immune system all over the body. Furthermore, instead of doing it in a short flash of a second, it does it gradually. And it turns out in 1972, a Canadian scientist by the name of Abram Petka discovered that if you stretch out a given amount of radiation over time, it produces a much stronger effect than a short X-ray. Because a medical X-ray occurs in a short time, you get hundreds of thousands of free radicals bumping into each other like people in a crowded nightclub. Nobody can get to the door if I yell, if I yell fire. And, but if there's only one or two people in the room and I yell fire, they all get out. And the same thing is true for the immune system. So if I have a cell of the immune system being attacked by free radicals, it takes only a single free radical to puncture the skin of the cell like a balloon, like a pinprick. And you know that if I throw a thousand darts at a balloon, it will destroy the balloon no more than if I throw a single dart. And that is why protracted, low-dose, low-level radiation, internal, ingested, and inhaled, is so much more deadly by factors of 100 to 1,000 fold. Nuclear power plants are uh, licensed to routinely release radioactive material, and they can release each chemical is measured up to the limit of giving the general public the ICRP recommended dose in a year. Uh, so it's, uh, it's set up so that it's legal to emit these uh, radionuclides into the air and into the water. Probably uh, from a normally operating plant, except for people with already established breathing problems, your main uh, problem would be the food chain. So if you uh, have contaminated the soil, for example, it will be picked up in the fruit trees or the vegetables that are planted. Someone could be miles away and they could receive this radioactive pollution in their food. Back in 1963, President Kennedy and Nikita Khrushchev signed the Limited Test Ban Treaty. Everyone thought peace was at hand in 1963. Even then, the number of children and grandchildren with cancer in their bones with leukemia in their blood or with poison in their lungs might seem statistically small to some in comparison with natural health hazards. But this is not a natural health hazard and it is not a statistical issue. The loss of even one human life or the malformation of even one baby who may be born long after all of us have gone should be of concern to us all. The Ban the Bomb movement, a very powerful movement, totally disintegrated as people rejoiced, saying the nuclear arms race is over. Wrong. Testing went from above ground to underground, about one a week, in fact, in terms of nuclear tests. And the bombs went from first generation bombs, huge, gigantic bombs, to second generation atomic and nuclear bombs, small nuclear weapons about this big, you could pack 10 of them in the nose cone of an MX missile. So the limited test ban treaty in some sense was a farce. It limited above ground testing, but it gave us the MIRV, multiply integrated warheads, a ferocious first strike weapon. The government has had to make us believe that the radiation emitted either from the bomb tests or from the normally permitted releases from nuclear plants are so low that they could not result in detectable effects on human health. And that is an outright lie. Because study after study for the last four or five decades have shown that people living near nuclear reactors or downwind from the bomb test site had much higher incidence of diseases and death than people living elsewhere. And all this has been available for decades, and it was kept from the public because of the need to use and threaten the use of nuclear weapons.
Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, an accident at a nuclear power plant. A spokesman said that a feed water pump broke down this morning, automatically shutting down the three-mile nuclear power plant. Some radiated steam escaped into the atmosphere before the plant could be sealed off, but officials said there is no threat to health. The tragedy of Three Mile Island was, of course, that it did not explode in a visible way the way Chernobyl did. Then everyone would have been warned, and people would have evacuated, and so on. But instead, it was a gradual, partly part meltdown that didn't go all the way the way Chernobyl did. And as a result, radioactive gases came out, but not so instantly, and there was no fire to warn people. And as a result, the governor hesitated for a few days to order evacuation of pregnant women and children, which I had recommended at the time when I was there together with George Wald on the day after the accident. I urged women and children to leave, but many didn't because you couldn't smell it. You couldn't see it. You, and, and the utility lied about it. They didn't want to admit that they had a major meltdown. And that caused many more children all over the Northeast, in Pennsylvania, New York, and all the way up to England, to New England, and across to Europe and Wales and England to be affected by the radioactive gases that have silently escaped. And nobody died at Three Mile Island, according to the government. There's a controversy about Three Mile Island. Some people say that you can see an increase in birth defects, an increase in spontaneous abortions. Other people say no such thing. Almost no radiation came out of Three Mile Island, and therefore it's just anecdotal data. Every effort will be made to keep those radiation levels down to the present state, which is uh, quite safe for all concerned. The truth of the matter is we don't really know. We know, for example, that about 13 million curies of xenon gas came out of that reactor. The radiation levels are being very carefully monitored throughout the area. But if you look at the data from Wednesday evening to Saturday of March of 1979, you realize that the decimeters were not in place from Wednesday to Saturday in many of these areas. In other words, for three days, radiation was pouring out of the reactor and we did not have the dissymmetry in place to be able to calculate reliably how much radioactive gas came out. In other words, it's like corralling the horses after the horses have escaped. At the present time, uh, all those who are involved here who are highly qualified tell me that the reactor core is indeed stable. Criminal charges have been levied by the NRC against the operators at Three Mile Island for forging the test scores of workers because the workers have routinely flunked the exam. It was nothing but one button, the P-O-R-V button, one button that set off a multi-billion dollar accident. Public statistics were altered in order to hide what was going on. Initially, nobody believed that there would be a significant effect on human health. And therefore, the initial monthly vital statistics reported by the uh, government uh, agencies showed a rise in infant mortality in the next few months that was totally unusual, which then declined again and ended about 10 months later. Um, this happened both in Maryland and New York and Pennsylvania. And then, uh, since I was studying the monthly statistics at the time and also looked at the final printed version in the bound volume of the vital statistics, I found that the bump that had occurred in the monthly statistics was wiped out and had been distributed over other months so 